Black Angel is a medieval myth, so the film takes place in a kind of version of the medieval world, where the knight returning from wars to find his land devastated, his family dead, and he decides to go back to the wars and an incident throws him into a point of uh, where he's dying and he fulfills the mission which was the knight's code to find a maiden and rescue them and have a duel with the death dealer. I was worked with very closely with George on Star Wars on the first one. I think it's fairly well known now. The crew treated George pretty badly on the first one. There was no belief in the film, but he afterwards has said there were only five people stood by his side, and I was one of them. I loved it, and I loved the world I was creating. I went on to Alien and Life of Brian. I wrote Black Angel out of my own desire to kind of film that I wanted to see that I'd not seen. Who are you? What makes you want to die, child? Wait! Who are you? Ridley was doing the sound mix on Alien at EMI Studios and I was up sitting in every day just watching because Bill Rowe was the best in the world, the sound mixer. And Sandy Leverson, the head of Fox, came in one day, asked what I was doing, I told him, he asked me the story, I told him, he said, fax it to me tonight. I did, he called me and said, George was really upset with the film that Fox put with Star Wars. He asked me if he could send it to George, which he did that night. And George came back the next day and said, let Roger make this, this is exactly right. And no one's to touch him, see it, change it, let him make the film he wants. I'm the first person to see it when it's finished. So they saw it, George and Owen Kirsch and everybody, they obviously liked it. And it was commissioned to go with Empire Strikes Back. So I know Fox made about 480 prints. It went out Britain, Australia, Scandinavia, any country where a short film program was with the main feature, it went tied to Empire. We must save this maiden. I owe her my life. Scotland played a huge part in me being able to fulfil what was in my head. It was the only place I knew I could make this film. Eileen de Castle represents the fantasy pre-Raphaelite castle to me, and I'd never seen it on films. It has a huge relevance with Star Wars. You know, I, you don't think about these things when you're making them. We just get on with our jobs, and now it's come up, and Lucasfilm want to put it with the digitized versions of Star Wars. They're coming out this year for the first time. They want to put it with that as a bonus material. So it kind of has its place in the history. Um, so, you know, it doesn't belong to me. I mean, this film is now out there. So I think this is the most appropriate that I could do, is to bring it back here.